You know, I've just been talking to one of those uh, thinking men. You know, the kind that you see in the cigarette commercials. This fellow, being one of our fine Plymouth Star salesmen, and being a thinking man, so to speak, feels very positive about the demonstration ride. He feels it's about the most important step in closing a sale. And he had a very unique idea. He explained it to me, and it was something like this. And believe me, it makes sense. Did you ever see a guy in a men's clothing store when he's trying to pick out a new hat? Well, he'll take the longest doggone time you can imagine just standing and staring at the merchandise. The thing that's bothering him most is that he just can't figure out which one he'll look the best in. That is, until the salesman helps him make that decision by having him wear the hat and telling him what the hat really does for him. What does he see in that mirror? Oh, he sees himself, sure. But not as others see him, no sir. Right now, he's, well, <coughs> president of the local bank. Or a diplomat on call for the State Department. Who knows, this purchase might make him the new Bat Masterson. And just a couple of minutes ago, all the hats were lookalikes to him. But trying one on has made the big difference. By golly, this hat makes him look like he wants to look. It does something for him. You think the same thing doesn't hold true when he looks for a new car? You bet your life it does. On the street, he sees model after model. So many, in fact, that when he gets in the showroom, it's hard for him to know when he's making the right choice. Oftentimes, a few bucks difference in a deal might swing him one way or the other. But deep down inside, he knows that's a pretty silly way to make such an important decision. But then, unless a salesman shows him, he doesn't know the big difference in Plymouth. And that's why I think that our all-star salesman friend is pretty right when he says that good demonstrating will also sell a Plymouth. And that's why we here at Plymouth are going to be pushing something that we believe will show your prospects the big difference in Plymouth. We call it the two-mile tryout. And I've got a couple ideas on how you can take advantage of this two-mile tryout campaign. Now, let's suppose you've got a walk-in. And after talking Plymouth for a while, maybe your normal approach to a demonstration ride doesn't cut any ice. So why not give him a straight-from-the-shoulder invitation to take a two-mile tryout? It's easy to remember. It's easy to say. The phrase is worded so it expresses a benefit to him because it puts the burden of proof on the car. So put the phrase to work. All right, let's suppose you've got this guy in the demo. You slide in behind the wheel first, but you don't take off like a redstone missile. As a matter of fact, you don't take off at all. You'll just want to sit there for a few moments and let him familiarize himself with the car. Tell him about some of the driving controls, the interior features, and so on. Things that will make an impression on him while he's getting used to a strange car. Talk about the upholstery. Ask him to feel the safety padding and study the instruments. Show him how you have to push the neutral button before you start for safety. Now, when you release the parking brake, be sure to mention that it's independent and why. Then a push on the drive button and you're off. He may think that you're off on a casual ride, but there's nothing casual about this trip. You know exactly where you're going. You know where you can get out of the traffic that might make him nervous. You know how to steer clear of the corrugated streets that make any car rattle. But remember this, a proving ground with all the torture gimmicks is great, providing you've got one to use. Or if you can compare Ford and Chevrolet and Plymouth together at the same time, that's swell. But what this fellow wants is good, smooth riding. And that's what you want to give him and nothing else. Now, while you're driving, you ask him if he'd like some heat or some fresh air. And that gives you a chance to show how simple it is to get what he wants out of our push button heater. Naturally, you say a few kind words about the power steering, how easy it is to steer, so relaxing to drive. If you're going to pass, 
you tell him to notice how easy it is in a Plymouth. But you tell him before you do it so he can appreciate it. In the same way, you point to a rolling intersection before you go over it. Not a proving grounds torture road, just something that lets you show how quick torsion air flattens out the car after a bump. Now, you know that Plymouth has good brakes, but he doesn't. So you ask him to watch how straight it stops when you hit the pedal hard. When it's safe to do so, you take your hands off the wheel, hit the pedal, take the wheel again, and brother, you've made a big sell for Plymouth safety. Now, you want him to get the feel of the car for himself. But if you ask him outright to drive, well, he'll probably refuse. After all, this is a strange car on a strange street. So just be natural, step out, walk around to his side of the car, and then invite him to drive. You don't have to ask him to take the wheel. You just don't leave him any other choice. Naturally, you want him to be comfortable, so you tell him to adjust the seat. Now, he's probably a little nervous, and you certainly don't want him to make any mistakes so he can blame it on the car. So, you go through the starting routine again. The buttons, the key, the brake. And be sure to tell him that just a little gas takes the Plymouth a long way. So use a light touch on the accelerator. A gentleman right now, as you know, is a good time to shut your cotton picking mouth and sell silence. Don't distract him with unnecessary conversation about features and facts, because you simply won't have his attention anyway. Sure, he'll make some comments, ask some questions, and while he's doing it, you'll be collecting some commitments and learning what it'll take to close this deal. Now, when he pulls up in front of the dealership, give him a few more big difference features. The windshield is real wide, the wipers give him a big clean view, and the frosters are aimed right smack at eye level. It'll make sense to him, but I don't have to tell you fellows all this. You guys know the pitch. For example, when he gets out, a word about the doorway will make him notice that it's real wide, easy to get into, easy to get out of. And maybe a last comment or two on styling. This fellow has felt what it would be like to own a Plymouth, and you might as well show him the frosting, too. And I'm convinced that my Plymouth All-Star salesman friend will be mighty proud of your demonstrating job. You know, when the prospect first looked at that Plymouth in the showroom, he saw only about 35% of the real car, just about what you're seeing in this little fellow here. No prospect can tell about the unseen 65% of Plymouth until you give him the two-mile tryout. Let him experience the push-button controls, the passing power, the full-time power steering, the level torsion air ride that he gets, plenty of elbow room, wide open spaces. Let your prospect get behind the wheel of an automobile that was built to be driven. And once he has seen that 35% and felt and experienced that 65%, once he drives a Plymouth, once he feels the big difference, he'll have all the reasons it takes to buy a Plymouth from you.